Also for us tonight, after 19 years, Congressman Brian Higgins is putting the chaos and dysfunction of D.C. politics behind him. The sun is now setting on our nation's capital. Here's a live look right now. It is Higgins final night in that building in office. I talked one on one with the veteran Democrat on the eve of his retirement that will happen tomorrow and got his final thoughts on the state of politics today. Congressman Higgins, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. And here we are your final week in Washington, D.C. Um, I wonder if we could just start here with some of your reflections on your time in Washington and, and the fact that you are leaving at a time when when I think it's safe to say our nation's capital is is sort of in a different place than it was when you started there. It was. It's a very different place. I mean, we spend more time in Washington doing considerably less. And um, but that said, you know, this is a bad patch that will, you know, will improve at some point. Congress is a resilient institution uh, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I have had uh, to represent uh, the extraordinary community of Buffalo and Western New York in the United States Congress for the past 19 years. I know that it's hard to boil 19 years down um, into a, a list of a few bullet points, um, but I'm going to ask you to do it anyway. I mean, when you and I have talked over the years, obviously you think of the Buffalo waterfront as being a highlight. What are what are a few of those bullet points as you reflect? Well, certainly, you know, getting the resources, the money uh, from the New York Power Authority and the federal highway bill uh, to jumpstart waterfront development in Buffalo has been helpful. Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, that work will continue. Um, also, uh, airline uh, flight safety uh, was an extraordinary experience uh, stemming from the tragedy of uh, Flight 3407, uh, which was February of 2009. Uh, but the families, getting to know them, uh, understanding their extraordinary commitment, knowing uh, and saying explicitly that uh, these flight safety rules will never bring back the loved ones that they lost, but they didn't want anybody else to have to go through this again. And they were right uh, because of the uh, the pilot training rules, uh, disclosure of, of flight uh, history. Uh, there has not been a major fatality uh, since uh, February 2009 uh, in terms of, of commercial aviation. Uh, and that is a great gift uh, that those families gave on behalf of their loved ones they lost uh, to the flying public. And we're much better off because of it. There were so many things that were unknown. I didn't know things like uh, two levels of safety, one for the regional carriers, one for the larger commercial carriers. But these folks, you know, and I always remember a couple of days after that tragedy, they came to my office uh, and they said they didn't blame the pilots. <laughs> even though uh, you know, the, the National Transportation Safety Board concluded that it was, it was pilot error. They said they blamed the system that allowed those pilots uh, with inadequate training uh, into the cockpit. That to me showed a tremendous sense of humanity, a tremendous sense of, of really getting to the bottom of what had occurred there. And they dedicated their lives uh, to ensuring that uh, the flying public uh, would be safe moving forward. Yeah, it was the first story that I covered when I moved to Western New York, and it is remarkable to think of the fact that there has not been a commercial aviation fatality um, in the United States since then. The, the work of those families has been nothing short of remarkable. Um, do you have- and Michael, it's also, let me just say this, it's yeah. also a good lesson for all of us. I don't know the political affiliations of any of them. And they were here in a group uh, committed to one purpose, and that is keeping the flying public safe. And I think that was the gem statement that they all agreed with. And uh, just really good people. And I've become very friendly with many of them. And, you know, they're very, very good people. So I just, again, wanted to commend them uh, for that extraordinary uh, uh, service, public service that they provided uh, to the American people and the flying public. There was also a lot of bipartisanship in Washington around that issue. You joined several of your Republican colleagues uh, over the years as people have kind of come and gone from elected office um, in making sure that those airline rules stay in place. Um, in terms of that bipartisanship, uh, we talked about how Washington has changed so much. Are you optimistic at all that sort of the extremes of both political parties um, their power and their hold on Washington may may uh, be alleviated a little bit as we head into the future? 
Well, the, the center will not hold the way it is because too little is getting done. Too many of the nation's largest challenges are not being addressed. Uh, so my hope is sooner rather than later. But keep in mind, you know, there's 435 members of the House of Representatives. Everybody can't have their own way. And most political debates are debates about partial truths. Uh, we need people that disagree with us to correct for our own errors so that we can get a better outcome uh, with legislation. That's what political discourse is all about. That's what political debate is all about. A lot of that has been lost. Brian Higgins is a soon to be retiring member of Congress who has represented uh, Western New York uh, for a long time. Once you get your feet wet inside Shays, uh, we look forward to talking to you about what's next there. Congressman, thanks for your time. Thanks, Michael. Take care.